So I have here a few APIs that I want to document. For that, we're going to use Swagger alongside with Swashbuckle. Swagger uses the Open API specification. And Swashbuckle is going to automatically generate our Swagger document from our routes and from our own APIs and automatically create the document for us. Let's go ahead and install that. So let's go to Manage Nougat Packages. We need to install swashbuckle.aspnet core. And as you can see, it's very popular. It has 108 million downloads. And if you take a look here, it has many dependencies. So this one is responsible for the documentation UI. The Swagger generator is going to automatically build our Swagger document based on our routes, based on our routes, our controllers, and of course our APIs. It will look at our parameters, if any. It will look at the return type of our APIs and all of that. So let's install that. And as you can see here, it's downloaded now. The next step is to go to startup.cs and add the services and middlewares that we need. So here in configured services, we need to add the swagger generator. So services dot add swagger gen. And now in our configure function, we need to add the uh, swagger middleware. So here let's do that app dot use swagger. And now we still need to add the Swagger UI middleware to serve our HTML, JavaScript, and CSS to be able to show the documentation UI. So app.use Swagger UI. And we also need to specify the Swagger JSON endpoint. And by the way, I'm following the official uh, documentation here from Microsoft. I'm going to keep a link in the description. Hopefully this video makes it way easier to follow. So let's add the uh, Swagger JSON endpoint now. And believe it or not, that's it. Now, if we run this, first of all, if we nav navigate to uh, this endpoint, we will be able to see our JSON document, which was auto-generated for us from Swashbuckle. Now, if you want to see the UI, we need to go to Swagger slash index.html and as you can see everything is auto generated for us we didn't have to type any json format uh, document so if we take a look at our person controller here for example we have exactly four apis and all of them were auto generated for us and as you can see they are well documented we can see that this is a get api for example we can see the route we can see that this uh, api does not take any parameters we can see that the response, the typical response is 200 with success as description. And here we can see a small sample that was auto generated as well. But don't worry, we can change that. We can add a lot of other stuff, and we're gonna do that if you uh, keep on watching, of course. Here, for example, this is a get API by ID. So we can see that here. For the post API, for example, this one shows us the request body example, so what we need to send in the body of the request. And this one is for the delete API. Now, the good thing is we have this feature here, try it out, that we can try out our own APIs. So if we click on it, we can execute that. And as you can see here, we receive data from our database. And if I show you the, the table, those are the same exact data that we have. Let's try out the post API now, for example. So try it out. This is perfect. We just have to replace the values. So here, let's go with uh, John. Let's go with Jeff. I don't know. Just random data. Let's execute this. And now, as you can see here, everything is good. If we go to our 
table, if you refresh, as you can see, we have added a new row. Now this feature might seem nice, but keep in mind that if this is for production, we, we don't want clients messing around with the actual data that we have in our database. We just want them to check out the APIs to know how to use them, but we don't want them to change the data, for example. So we can disable this try it out feature. Let's do that now. It's very simple. All we have to do is add another function here in our Swagger UI middleware. So let's add this. And if we take a look at this function, it says list of HTTP methods that have the try it out feature enabled. An empty array disables try it out for all operations. And that's why here we haven't uh, passed any parameter. So it, it will take it as an empty array. And now if we run this again, let's refresh. And if you open any API, as you can see, we no longer have this try it out feature anymore. Now, there are a lot of other features that we can add. For example, we can add a description for each API. We can add our own sample request. So not the example that they gave us. We can give our own example to make it clearer for other users. And we can also add different uh, response types. So we might have 201 created. 204, for example, we can have the bad request uh, status. We can add our own responses and we're going to be doing that as well. Now, to be able to add those features that I just mentioned, we need to go to the csproj file and we need to add a new property group. And here we have set the generate documentation file to true. This will allow us to add our own XML comments and we will be doing that right now. And again, keep in mind that I'm using the official documentation. Now we need to configure this Swagger Gen service to be able to uh, find our XML uh, comments and use them in the UI. So let's do that. We have to add the following three lines. And of course, we need to add the namespaces to be able to use them. Now we can have fun, so let's go back to our controller and let's go for this get person API, for example. And here, to be able to add our own comments, we can add a triple slash. This was auto generated. Now, for the description, we only need the summary tag. So, here, let's say, for example, let's describe what this API does, which is get a person by ID. Now, if we save this and run again. If we refresh this page, as you can see here, it has added the description. So now let's say we need to add a sample request so that the people who are viewing our documentation will understand what to send in the body for the post request, for example. So to do that, triple comment, but here we need to add a remarks tag. And here I'm going to explain what I wrote in a second. I'm going to stop this. Here, if we take a look, we, uh, we here we can write whatever we want. So I, I specified that this is the following is a sample request. And then I added this post here just so it's understandable that this is a post request. And this is the object that we need to send. This is the uh, format that needs to be sent. Now, if we I'm going to remove this here. And now if you run this, if we refresh this, as you can see here, we have our own sample request now with our own examples, which is a better way than this one here. But this one is useful as well. We can also add a sample uh, response here, which I already did. So here, for example, you know that this get request will get an object of the following uh, format. The person object will be uh, of the following format. And I think this is very useful and, and very customizable. Now, you should be careful because the spacing and the indentation here is important. So let's say 
we didn't have the correct spacing for example let's run this as you can see now it didn't show as it should have and that's because the indentation is not correct so just to be sure you can press you can come back to the line and press tab and this is the correct indentation so let's take that here and place it here also the curly braces uh, should be indented i believe so in case you run into this problem care the, uh, care to fix the indentation now if you run it again as you can see it's correct again now a good thing to add would be the responses type for a certain api so as you know not every api call is always successful and is always going to show the 200 status code sometimes there's there are errors from the client part sometimes server errors and so on so if you want to add so if you want to add more response status codes we would do that we would use the response tag and give the code attribute with a value so here for example 201 usually means created successfully so I want to show person created successfully and if the response is 400 which usually mean a bad request if any data is incorrect in the post person API now if you run this and open this post person API if you go all the way down as you can see we still have the 200 status code with the description success and we now have two different status codes that we just added here and it's showing whatever we have set here between the two tags now I don't know why the UI isn't perfect for me but you get the point this is very useful in API documentations and I really appreciate this swashbuckle package that have that has auto generated everything for us we didn't have to write our own uh, swagger document which is this one here it would have taken a long time for us so this saved a lot of time definitely I have good news for you let's say you're creating a new project and let's go to ASP.NET Core web application create in case you have ASP.NET Core 5 and not any other previous version if you take a look here we have this enable open API support feature so it's already enabled if you create this let's go to the startup.cs file and if you take a look at our configured services this was auto generated everything was added directly the swagger documentation service and if you take a look here in the dependencies packages swashbuckle.aspnet core is automatically installed here in asp.net5 if you keep it enabled and if you run this If we, if, we, if we refresh this page as you can see everything is already there the documentation is already here this is very useful it will increase your productivity you wouldn't have to waste your own time by downloading this package and setting everything up now of course if you want to add uh, more features as I showed you previously you would need to come here and add the uh, property group to enable XML comments and all of that but this is very useful if you're using ASP.NET 5 and yeah love it if you made it till here please leave a like if this video helped you and subscribe this would mean a lot to me and if you have any ideas or anything you want to see any video idea please leave a comment and I will look into it thank you and we'll see you next time